Welcome to my channel. Today we look at how to find the volume of a pyramid by use of cost products. Of course, we know you have other methods of finding the volume of a pyramid. Now, so let's look at the pyramid that I've drawn here. You can see that this pyramid has, uh, has a base. And of course, if we start from what we know, that the volume of a pyramid is always given by a third times best area times height. This we know. Now, our base here is uh, a parallelogram. And so the area of the base, area of the base, since it's a parallelogram, we know from our previous video that it will be given by alpha cross beta. It given by the magnitude of alpha cross beta. So we only need to find what height is. And what we see, this is our height. And we can see that height is uh, in the direction that is perpendicular to the base. So it's a component, is a component of mu, is a component of mu, and is in the direction that is perpendicular to the base. So what that means that a height can be expressed as mu dot alpha cross beta divided by the magnitude of alpha cross beta. That's what I, what we see from here, because this is this, this now a this alpha cross beta of uh, the magnitude of alpha cross beta. This is a vector that is perpendicular to both alpha and beta, and since it's a component of mu, that is why we express it this way. So that means. We only need to substitute this L here and substitute this one here. And that will give us the volume of a pyramid. That's what we want to see because the questions, the question at hand says, prove that the volume of a pyramid of size mu, alpha, and beta is given by a third the modulus of mu dot alpha cross beta. This is um, a scalar triple product. So let's go to the workings directly. And what I've said is that to prove this, notice that a pyramid has a parallelogram base. And the volume of a pyramid is given by a third area of the base times perpendicular height, which I call H. And since the base is a parallelogram, we have this knowledge that the area will be given by this. And from the figure that we've just seen, we've discovered that the height is a component of mu, and that it is in the direction that is perpendicular to the plane that contains alpha and beta. And therefore, because of that, height can be expressed this way. It can be expressed as mu dot this unity vector. So, substituting that in the, our volume, what do we get? We get that volume is a third height times best area, which is a third H times this, is our best area. But height can be replaced by this, can be replaced by this, then times this modulus. So what you discover is that this modulus and this are the same, so they can cancel out, and we are left with this. We are left with this. But what you notice that this is a scalar triple product. It can be positive or negative. But because it can be negative, to avoid the negative, because I gave you the volume, 
we just need to introduce modulus. And that is what I did. That is, since this can be negative, we take its modulus. And then we find that volume will be given this. And that's what we required. This is what we were supposed to show. So we shown it. So let's look at an example. The example that I have here is that find the volume of a pyramid, ABC, dot, dot, dot. If A is given by that, B is given by this, or C is given by that. So we've been given two, three sides. We don't need to have all the sides. Three are enough. Because all we want is height and the best. And so, our volume will be this given by that from uh, the first question that we just looked at. And so we can calculate the scalar triple product. And we now have to calculate the scalar triple product so is here. Uh, you can check the previous videos on how we are doing that calculation of the scalar triple product. We also did calculate the vector triple product in our other videos. So that means you're just getting the determinant of the coefficients. And so C1, C2, C3, the coefficients of C. C was 2, 3, 1, that's what I have. And then A was 2, 4, 4, that's what I have. And the B was negative 4, 4, 7, that's what we have. So what we want is the determinant of this matrix. And to find the determinant of this matrix, what I did was I take this matrix, although there are other ways you can use to find the determinant, but for me, the easier one is I take this matrix, place it here, and take the first two columns, add them here, multiply along these diagonals in blue. As I add the result, this will be the 8 times 7, which is 56. This will be 12 times negative 4, which is negative 48. This will be 8. Then multiply along the diagonals in red as I subtract. So this will be 14 times 3, which is negative 4. Which is 42, but then I subtract. This is 16 times 2, which is 32, so I subtract. And this is negative 16. When I subtract negative 16, I get positive 16. So doing this gives me negative 42. The modulus of this times a third gives me 14 units cubed. And that is the volume of that pyramid. So it's very easy if you're asked to find the volume of a pyramid and the sides are given to you. Let's look at another example. So you have this, find the volume of this pyramid where edges have been given to us. So we know that the volume will be given by a third, the modulus of alpha dot beta cross mu. The modulus of that. So we go straight to get the scalar triple product. And to get the scalar triple product, we're just getting the determinant of the matrix formed by the coefficients of this. So you have the alpha here, 2, negative 3, 5. We have beta here, negative 4, negative 4, 7. And we have mu here, negative 1, 3, negative 2. So we go straight to find the determinant the way we've done in our previous example. Take the entire matrix, place it here, and then the first two columns, add them. So that we can have three diagonals in blue. Multiply along these diagonals as you add the results. And then multiply along these other red diagonals as you subtract the results. So that gives you negative 61. So we need a third times the modulus of negative 61. And that gives you 61 over 3 units cubed as the volume of the pyramid.